Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome to my talk on DevOps for Databricks. I am a data engineering consultant for Advancing Analytics. Okay, our agenda, what are we going to do? Um, we're going to look at what, what is DevOps. We're going to look at CICD, Continuous Integration, Continuous Deployment, IAC, so Infrastructure as Code, Build Agents, Databricks REST API, a real world example, um, and then some other um, tooling examples. So what is DevOps? So we've got our BI developer, our data scientist, our data engineer, our software engineer, all data professionals. And our BI developer um, wants to get the dashboard published on a website. Our software engineer uh, wants to update the website with the latest dashboard. Our data scientist wants to productionize um, models um, and have them automatically update. And our data engineer wants to push the latest ETL pipelines to production. Well, essentially, this all boils down to DevOps. They all want to get um, their product, their solution into the real world. So DevOps is essentially um, that code, that solution that we then, we build it, we test it, and we release it, and we deploy it. So essentially, DevOps is that process, and that's that figure of eight we can see here, essentially, of creating that solution, testing it, publishing it, and going around in that figure of eight over and over again, working together to essentially deploy our solutions. So to do that, we have pipelines, we have DevOps pipelines. So we have the develop development stage, and then testing, and then production. So what tools do we use to actually achieve this? So we've got two schools. We've got continuous integration, continuous deployment, and infrastructure as code. So on the continuous integration, continuous deployment, we can use Azure DevOps, Circle CI, Jenkins, Octopus Deploy, GitLab, and infrastructure as code, we've got ARM templates in Azure, Terraform, Pulumi, and Azure Bicep. There's many, many more options, but these are some of the most commonly used tools. Continuous integration and continuous deployment, CICD. Continuous improvements, essentially, um, feature releases, fast bug fixes, ability to quickly roll back. That's what CICD gives us. It gives us um, the ability to test our code um, within those pipelines, so unit testing, um, integration testing, end-to-end -end testing, and we can also perform linting within those pipelines as well, so making sure that our code is in a nice format and conforms to our standards. Infrastructure as code, IAC. Infrastructure as code is essentially the blueprint of your solution, so it's essentially writing down how you want your solution to be structured, what services you want to use, what databases, for example, what data lake storage solution you want to use. That's all defined in your infrastructure as code. Build agents. What is a build agent? It is the compute under your DevOps pipeline. So we've already talked about pipelines. A build agent is that compute under the hood. Um, and there's lots of out of the box available agents uh, in tooling, um, DevOps tooling such as Azure DevOps. Um, but you can create your own custom VM agent. Um, and you can do that with a VM agent, or you could also create a, a custom Docker agent to perform the same tasks. So in your pipeline, you can define some YAML, and that's what we're going to be looking at in a bit. And then um, your agent essentially lives under the hood, so that will pick up your YAML when you trigger it, um, and then process all the steps in your YAML. And then your pipeline essentially gets executed on that agent. So why would you use a custom build agent? Um, you can decide specifically what you want to use your code, um, how you want to use it and what you want it to run on. So whether you want a Linux machine, a Windows machine, what versions um, of the operating systems you want, what Docker image. Um, you can make sure all the tooling that you need is already installed on those machines so you don't have to put that into your pipeline. So you don't have to install specific packages every time in your pipeline, for example. And you can make sure all the tools you need essentially are, are there on that agent. It can keep your state, um, and it can also run within a VNet, a virtual network, and that's super important with, with companies or clients who want to keep everything secure. So the Databricks REST API, so we're going to be looking at examples of the Databricks REST API, but what exactly is it? Um, well, Databricks REST API um, allows you to perform lots of essential Databricks tasks. Um, 
And if you already use a REST already, then you can use that your existing REST knowledge um, out of the box, start working with it straight away. So it's easy to pick up. Um, because it's REST, you can also um, use your own language against it. So we're going to be using Python because uh, essentially within the world of Databricks and Spark, there are lots and lots and lots of Python users. So um, it makes sense that we write our code in Python. And essentially what we're going to be doing using the REST API is cross-platform. So I will be demoing it in Azure, um, but that doesn't mean you have to use Azure. You can use the same principles um, with any cloud provider. So our real world example. What are we going to do? Um, we're going to use Python scripts and the Databricks REST API to create a Databricks cluster, check cluster status, upload notebooks to the Databricks workspace, run some tests against our Python code, build and upload a Python wheel to Databricks, install, uninstall, update Python wheels in Databricks. And then we're going to use Azure DevOps to run our scripts. So we'll have our YAML pipelines, as mentioned before, our YAML, um, and then um, we'll quickly look at the custom DevOps agent that I've set up to actually run those pipelines. Okay, so here uh, we've got um, a Databricks instance. So this is a Databricks instance that I've created in Azure. So we can see here, I'm looking at the cluster. Click on this tab here, I've got um, a basic notebook that I've created. And if we look, look down here at um, what clusters we've got available, we've got one that I've called manual cluster because I've come in manually and created it, but we're going to create um, our own using the REST API, using our scripts. So, and if we go into our cluster here, we can see essentially there are currently no libraries. So here we've moved into Visual Studio Code. Now in, in here, I have my own solution here where I built up all of my scripts, um, including a very basic Python wheel, which incorporates just one test that we're gonna look at as well. And then we've also got our pipeline and our notebook. So firstly, we'll look at the pipeline scripts. What do we wanna do first? Well, we want to actually create our cluster. What is this script doing? Well, in the scripts and in all of the scripts, what we are firstly doing is actually authenticating. Um, so you need to authenticate with your, your REST API, and I've already done this, um, and you essentially get um, some tokens that you then set up and work with to actually then be able to work with the REST API. And then I've got essentially an issue, this method here, which is create cluster. Um, and this is doing exactly what it says on the tin. It is essentially, um, communicating with that REST API and creating as a cluster. And that's essentially what this JSON is here. We're just defining what that cluster is gonna be. So let's actually, um, let's actually fire this off. Okay, so it's returned as um, the cluster ID, which is super useful. Um, but now we've got this cluster as pending start. Why is it doing that? Well, I um, have deliberately uh, created this method here, which as soon as we run this method, this create cluster, we've got this data manage data roots cluster method. And what this is doing is it's polling um, the REST API until it gets a status um, against that cluster that it can actually work with. So whether it gets a, the cluster is started status or it might, um, if we're unlucky, get a status as the, of the cluster failed to start. So we are simply um, in here, we've literally got a while loop that is just waiting for um, a relevant status that it can work with. So if we were to leave this code here um, as it is, this uh, terminal, it would essentially um, keep printing that cluster is pending until it gets a cluster is successfully started or cluster has, has failed to start. So for the sake of the demo, we're going to cancel out of that. That's not going to hurt the cluster in any way um, because we were literally just polling to see the status of it. But if we go into our notebook, yeah, let me just do a quick refresh. Now, before we just had the manual cluster, but now we've got this DevOps cluster as well. And we can see there that it is an estate. So that circle is going round and round that we are now having a cluster, a DevOps cluster, um, that we have created via our scripts that is, is now starting up. So um, what do we want to do now? Well, we've got a cluster, so now we want to have a go at actually uploading some notebooks. So script to upload notebooks to DBX, exactly what it says on the tin. 
again we're authenticating and then we literally have some some python code here which is working with the rest api to look inside the folder in here um grab the notebook in there and upload it so if we were to run that script we get a response of 200 that's what we want if we go into our workspace and back in here we can see uh we essentially have this devops uh notebook uh notebook here that essentially has been uploaded um via our script so what do we want to do now so um we've looked at the notebooks we've looked at the wheel um there's a, a load more scripts in here that wrap around that um essentially what we'll see in the pipeline in a minute but what we want to look at now um, is the wheel that we've got so we've got a really basic python wheel now a python wheel is a python um, package essentially it's the library that you can use the same as you would any other library in python it's just one that you've created yourself so um, we've got a wheel here really basic and it's got some tests in here well one test specifically um, and this test um, we want to run in our pipeline but firstly um, let's see it running locally Um, it's using PyTest, which is a testing package in Python. Okay. All right. Okay, we can see that um, we've got one uh, pass test. So we can see this test is working. It's just testing some really dummy code that I've got in here. So we've got a test there, and essentially, um, we can run that um, in our pipeline but firstly what we want to do is we want to actually upload that wheel into into the actual um, cluster so what we will do is we Eventually. So what we want to do is then run that. So we're going to upload our wheel Databricks. So essentially just this script here, upload wheel to DBFS. And um, we've got a check wheel status here, which does exactly what um, the polling did when it was checking the status of the cluster. It does exactly the same thing. It will just poll and wait to see um, that the wheel has installed correctly. Um, so it's exactly the same thing as before. So if we go into our cluster, we don't have any logs at the minute, but if we refresh the page, that's it. So we've uploaded it, sorry, now we need to do an install. Let's do an install. There we go. Right, there we are. So um, there's our wheel. Um, we've uploaded it via our script and it has a status of installing. So that's exactly what we want. So we've seen the testing for the wheel. We've seen um, uploading the wheel itself. We've seen how we can uh, create a cluster and poll against cluster to see its status. And um, we've uploaded our notebooks. Now we want to actually see this in the context of DevOps because we were just doing it all locally. Um, we want to actually see it working in Azure DevOps itself. Okay, so um, here we are now in Azure DevOps. And um, we can see here um, I've already created a pipeline, uh, a DevOps for Databricks pipeline. And if we just dig into that, and we go into edit. We can see our YAML. So this uh, YAML is within the repository we were just looking at. So within Visual Studio Code, uh, it was in the folder there as well. So it's in, in our, our source control. 
and we just hook it up essentially um, within Azure DevOps um, to a pipeline. So to do that, super simple, you just go into pipelines, new pipeline, you select um, Azure Git repos, you say it's an existing YAML file you've created and you can just hook it up that way. Or if you wanted to, you could get um, Azure to do it for you, Azure DevOps to do it for you at this stage. You can say, just create me a new one in this Git repository and it will do. So going into our pipeline, go into edit it again. So here um, we've essentially got um, initially a load of stuff to set up our pipeline. So we're saying, um, what branch are we interested in? Um, what pool are we working with? Now that's our, our custom agent, and I'll show you that in a minute, um, the custom agent that I've actually set up. Um, if you weren't working with the custom agent, you'd actually specify just um, a normal um, out of the box um, Azure agent, and it would just simply just go away and find you one every time this runs. Um, variables, so I've got a variable group essentially sitting around in the background that's got a load of useful variables in there that are used throughout the pipeline. And then we actually go into our jobs. So this is where we are actually defining tasks um, that are essentially going to run our scripts. So initially we've got some setup stages. So we've got um, setting up the Azure Key Vault, do, installing some Python packages. Um, we do all our authentication. Now this bit I've commented out, this is literally um, where we are um, creating our cluster and then doing that polling and um, because that takes quite a long time I've commented out for now for the, the sake of the demo um, but normally we'd have this in here as well and it would do that polling that we saw before and then we've got our second job here which is upload notebooks so literally if we scroll down to this task here we are specifying um, the script path so that script that we were looking at before the upload notebooks to dbx we are saying this is where my script is um, run it um, as part, as this task and it will essentially go away find that script and um, we pipe in all of our environment variables that we need so those tokens I was talking about for the rest API um, we set those off earlier in this pipeline and then we pipe them in so we can use them in the script we tell it what directory we're in so it can actually find the relevant files and we're away so essentially um, we've got a whole load of these tasks in here that are going away setting all this up and running our scripts in a linear order, in our sequential order. So initially here, we're uploading our notebook, and then we're going to upload our wheel, install a load of Python packages again. We're going to run our tests here. So I'll show you in a second what the output of this is. So we're doing our PyTest. Um, essentially, that will go away, find the test, um, and then we've got some extra parameters here, which actually make sure that those tests are visible to Azure DevOps um, and then we can actually stop the pipeline accordingly if the tests fail um, and we can actually um, see those tests in a nice GUI. So yeah, so we published our test results and then here's where we're actually calling our script. So upload wheel to DBFS. So we are uploading it into DBFS in, in Databricks. So it's somewhere that Databricks can see it. Then we uninstall the wheel, and this is because we need to uninstall it before we reinstall it. So we do an uninstall, and we see there we've got an uninstall script. Um, and when you uninstall a wheel, you need to restart the cluster. So there we've got a restart cluster script that we call. And then we essentially install the wheel. So that's the script that we ran before our install wheel script. And then we've got our check wheel status. And like I said, that's just gonna poll um, and wait for that wheel to have a status of either successful or, or a failure. So where are those test results? So if we just step out of this here, go into our job. And you see here, we've got a menu here for summary, and that's basically all of our, our steps within our Azure pipeline. We've also got this test tab. This is here because we were actually outputting those test results. Um, and what we can see here, um, we've got total tests of one, and it's telling us that that test actually passed. And if it had failed, essentially it would have stopped the pipeline for us and this would be red. So that's super useful. Um, if you've got a suite of unit tests in there that you can actually um, essentially make your code really robust and make sure that nothing gets pushed into your, your test or development environments that don't um, conform to essentially your, your unit test, your blueprint there. So, um, so that's our YAML um, and that's our tests. Um, what about this agent that I'm talking about, this custom agent? 
if we go into our project settings and down here under pipelines we've got agent pools and I've set up this DevOps for Databricks pool. So an agent pool is essentially a pool of, of agents that you set up that could be a VM or maybe a, a Docker container that you've got running um, in your infrastructure. So in here, if we go to agents, and um, we can see here I've set up a DevOps for Databricks agent. This is simply a VM within Azure. Um, so literally a VM that I've set up in Azure, I've installed the relevant components on it um, so that it can become an agent and connected it to this particular Azure DevOps instance. Um, and if we tab to the jobs here, we can see um, that pipeline that we've got and all the times it's run. So it's logging all of that against our agent, all the processes that have run against it. Okay, so now we're going to look at um, examples of other DevOps and infrastructure as code tools. So what else can we use? other than Azure DevOps, other than working with the REST API for Python, but uh, Databricks, sorry. So other IAC tools, um, we can use Terraform, we can use Azure, Azure ARM templates, we can use Gloomy, um, we could use Azure Bicep, and, and essentially many, many more. What is Terraform? So Terraform is a super popular tool, but what is it? Um, Terraform is an open source infrastructure as code software tool that provides a consistent CLI workflow to manage hundreds of cloud services. Terraform provides cloud API into declarative configuration files. So Terraform has a concept of write, plan, and apply. Um, so write essentially is you're writing your infrastructure's code, your blueprint, you can plan it. So you can literally hit plan, see what's actually gonna happen if you deploy those changes, if you create those resources. So that's great um, as a safety net, if you're gonna suddenly blow something away that you actually wanna keep in your infrastructure, if you're gonna change something that, that shouldn't be changed. And then you can hit apply and it pushes all that up um, into your infrastructure, into your cloud solution. So this is um, essentially a diagram taken from Terraform's um, own um, documentation to how to uh, infrastructure as code um, DevOps um, Databricks. So um, you can look at their documentation, you can find this diagram and it just literally illustrates all the different components that you can work with and how that hooks into AWS and Azure. And this is just some example, um, some example Terraform, again, taken from their documentation where we're setting up our database connection, um, specifying that we're going to be uploading some notebooks, um, specifying we're going to be working with a job. So that's on um, the left hand side and on the right hand side, um, that's what's actually carrying out those tasks. So what is Pulumi? Uh, cloud engineering for everyone. Build, deploy, and manage modern cloud applications and infrastructure using familiar language tools and engineering practices. So essentially with Bloomy, you can write your infrastructure's code in Python, in TypeScript, in Go, or in C Sharp. So if any of those are languages that you're really familiar with, it makes infrastructure's code a lot more accessible because you're writing it in something you already know. So just a quick example of Pulumi Azure Databricks module. Um, it's based on uh, the Azure RM Terraform provider. Um, so here we've just got some example Pulumi here. This is our Python flavor because we are Python developers. And it's just an example of where we're setting up a workspace essentially with Pulumi. The great thing with Pulumi is because you're writing in Python, if there's any features functionality that's missing in there that you want to do with your infrastructure as code, you can literally just, for example, start working with the REST API as we have done in, in this uh, demonstration. You can literally just wire that in and have it jumping in and out of Pulumi to do your infrastructure as code, essentially. So what is Bicep? Um, Project Bicep is the next generation of ARM templates. Now, if you've worked with ARM templates in Azure, they can get really complex um, and, and they can get quite confusing to understand. And Bicep is just um, the next generation of that, a way of more easily defining your infrastructure as code and your DevOps. Uh, Bicep is cleaner, more readable language that gets compiled into ARM um, when it's deployed. So it still creates ARM um, under the hood, but essentially you've got an easier um, Bicep language over the top. So you write and compile your bicep language, uh, then that compiles into your ARM templates, uh, goes to the Azure Resource Manager, and then that's deployed to your solution. So um, finally, our summary. So DevOps is for everyone. 
CICD keeps your code in check and the latest features um, and changes in production as soon as possible. IAC infrastructure code is the blueprint of your solution. Lots of tooling options and Databricks REST API can be used in conjunction with Python and Azure DevOps to create effective fault tolerant pipelines. <laughs>